Hi everybody, my name is Louise from Absafe and I have the delight today of uh, having a chat with Mark who works for the Dennis Law Legacy Trust. Thank you for um, agreeing to do this today. I know that you're really busy, so it does mean a lot that you've spared some time uh, for Absafe, but also the young people that are watching it. I wonder if um, you could start, Mark, by just telling us what you do. Sure. So my name is Mark Williams and I work for the Dennis Law Legacy Trust. Now, the Dennis Law Legacy Trust is a charity. Uh, we work in the third sector uh, and we provide lots of different programmes for young people to achieve a positive destination is what we call it. But most of all, it's about having fun, engaging with young people, providing a safe environment for you guys to come and join with your friends, be sociable and engage in multiple different things. And our staff and volunteers will hopefully over the time um, help you go through volunteer programs and employability programs that lead to some outcome that you'd like to be, be that in college or university or a job in it's an area that you would really enjoy. How did you get to do this role? Ah, so I've had a very winding career. Um, lots of young people do nowadays. I'm still classing myself as young, I'm afraid. <laughs> Um, yeah, me too, no, me too. Exactly. We were all young at heart, surely. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I do believe the days of sitting there at school saying, I want to be a train driver, I'm going to join the forces, or I'm going to be this. It, it, it's, it's, it's changed so much nowadays. It's very rare you'll meet someone who's in their 30s and 40s and had the same job from the day they left school. It, it's just very, very rare. Um, now, that's due to numerous different things. Um, but for me, it's all about doing what I enjoy doing you know being quite honest with myself and you know realizing you're gonna be working for quite a few years Mark. <laughs> you might as well find a job we like um so yeah it's, for me it's all been something i'm passionate about something i enjoy something that makes turning up to work on a monday morning not a chore you know something i'm looking forward to doing uh, and that's what i've always done and sport for me was the hook uh, i played sport from a very very young age um, and, and I looked for jobs associated with sport. You know, it was either playing rugby, it was either coaching, it was either managing. Uh, I've had numerous different roles. And I mean, I'm trying to think of the last, just kind of the last 10 years, I've been a kind of, kind of volunteer manager. Uh, I've worked at a residential sports camp in America. Um, I've, and they all kind of led up to this opportunity with the Dennis Hall Legacy Trust, um, which was, how long have I been with them now? Six years. Six years. And back then it was me, four volunteers, uh, and a bag of footballs and some locations <laughs> we run sports in. Um, given the space to breathe, and like I say, if you're passionate about something, you become very, very good at it because you want to do it. You know, you're driven to do it. And I think that's a very important thing that people have nowadays. Uh, and because I was like that, surrounded by like-minded people, we all wanted to make a difference to young people. The charity has grown quite a lot now. Uh, in fact, we now set up four full-time members of staff. Uh, we have 16 members of part-time staff and we have over 50 volunteers all working towards the same goal of improving young people's opportunities uh, and life choices. Um, so for me, yeah, it's been kind of following a path that I want to be in, I want to enjoy, and that some, at the end of the day, I probably won't want to retire from. So that, that's where I am. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. And I think what's been common when I've been doing these chats is that um, everything that people have done previous to the role that they're doing has helped them with the role that they're currently in. So nothing is wasted. Right. So it's, it's almost like a, it's a journey rather than you're gonna, it's going to happen overnight. And I'm sure every time that you run uh, a course or, you know, got a group of kids doing a football you learn something because we learn something every every time we meet a group of people or a person and, and that can help in you know in any role that we we do in the future your enthusiasm is brilliant as well by the way um <laughs> so I also obviously work for charity so I wondered I think people think charities are easier in a way because we are called a charity but actually I, I, I know um I, I know so, <laughs> yeah it's people go oh, it's just a charity but actually I wondered if you could tell people like the commitment that's required to constantly look for funding and constantly have that worry that you can't run it in the next financial year because you're, you're looking for funding and obviously I'm I'm aware of that so I just wonder if you could explain maybe that's some of the difficulties around your role and, and what that means Yes. No, I mean, we'd all like to say that we're all in permanent jobs and we'll be there forever and ever. and We'll always get paid and things like that. And our programs will always run because there's always lots of money being donated and going around. It's not the case, as, as you're aware, in the third sector. Um, most charities are very much cap in hand. And what I mean by that is we're always looking for donations <laughs> yeah. to continue what we're doing. Um, there are various ways of getting money um, that you could get people running marathons or tough mothers or fundraising dinners. But you also have to rely on trusts and foundations and grant applications, presentations to businesses and corporations. Uh, and it all 
hopefully if you're successful it adds up and you're able to continue doing you know what you believe is the great stuff that your charity does yeah uh, it's, it's it's a continuous cycle yeah. um, very very much continuous like most most donations tend to be reasonably small and for a short period you know long-term donations or regular money coming in every year is very rare to get um so yes it's very continuous we, we are quite fortunate I, I guess that we do have a lot of like-minded people in Aberdeen mm. and beyond that do believe in the work we do um but yes I mean I would say at least 50 60 percent of my working life now is funding applications or reporting back on them. Um, the life of street sport and dental lectures sounds very sporty and engaging and fun. But there's a lot of people behind the scenes making yeah. sure that that happens out there uh, for the young people to say. So yeah, it's tough, tough, it, 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 it is it is tough, especially when you get a lot of rejections as well or people yeah. that can't or you don't meet certain criteria. So what do you would you think that was one of the most challenging parts of your role? Absolutely. Yeah, no, no guarantee. And like I said, you can come up with this amazing idea that's been inspired by young people's choice and decisions and right, we're going to make that happen for you. We then have to go and take that and sell that almost to an organization or another funder saying, this is what we'd like to do. This is how we do it. Would you fancy paying for it? Uh, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. When you think, oh, that they'll, they'll definitely fund this. This is brilliant. This is going to happen. And yeah, you'll get the, re- the rejection letter or sorry, and then maybe next time response. And yeah, it's, you have to go back to young people saying, sorry, we can't do it yet. Um, yeah, it's tough because I think the success rate of funding applications, obviously it's, it varies depending on various different charities, obviously, but I think it's only about two out of 10 it would normally be not a bad success rate for, <laughs> for funding applications. So you can imagine all the time and effort you put into a funding application just said, nah, sorry. So, like, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't have to imagine, uh, Mark, I, I do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And it is, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of, um, yeah. And, and yeah, you try really hard. And, and the reason that I guess we both try really hard is because you want the outcome to be is you'd be able to provide a service for the young people. So it's the, you, I, I'm sure we're very similar in, is when we're, we're filling applications with, with that's, that's our goal. Our goal is to say, look, we need this money, not because we drive around in nice cars, which we well, don't, not because, <laughs> not because we get lots of money, which we don't. And that's okay. But actually our, the, the back in our mind is like, we need this money because we need to make sure like in your case that, you know, you develop the, roles and responsibilities for kids and in, in my case that we keep, keep keep kids safe so and what we do is really important I think what we do is really important um for Absolutely. similar reasons and it's about investing in the future of Aberdeen and and it's about investing in the future for young people in Aberdeen so yeah it's very much uh, a constant battle but it's a battle that was worth the effort yeah, I'll even, even the even the re- re- rejection letters and you're like especially when you get oh. like two, like two in a day you're like <laughs> yeah, oh gosh um because yeah i mean i guess a lot of people who maybe don't know much about charities behind the scenes realize a lot of the staff are actually on contracts yeah. so it's like a, a three-year contract to do a post or to run a program for a certain amount of time due to that's been how much funding was in place and job security is a big thing for everyone yeah. uh, and you know, you know as you know you've got someone who's maybe got nine months of their contract left and you look at them go i need to find funding for that program to yeah, keep yeah. That person who's really good at the job they're making a great difference and yeah it's hard, especially small and medium or sized charities. You know, we don't have paid full fundraisers or paid people to do these funding applications. It normally falls onto the people who've been there to do it. You know, oh God, I mean, I'm not going to tell you my English result when I was at school, but probably, <laughs> I have to rely on spell check and numerous things when I'm doing funding applications. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I was a little bit naughty at school, so um, uh, yeah, I've had to yeah learn yeah learn along the way actually. Um, so I yeah I. Yeah, and well done for keep it going because sometimes it can be hard. So my other question is, if I could give you a magic wand, what would you change? What would I change? <laughs> and it can be it can be on anything. I won't mention my fashion sense. I'll, 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 choose, <laughs> something, I'll choose something work related. Uh, what would I change? I, I would change. It, it's quite a big thing to change, but um, I, I would I would love an even level playing field for young people. No matter where you live, I mean, let's take Aberdeen, for example. No matter where you live in Aberdeen, you have the same opportunity or chance or experiences as any other young person in the whole city. Now, that, that's a that's a big magic wand you're, you're giving me here because it's going gonna, it's gonna to take that. This, this magic wand's massive, so you oh, can have brilliant. anything you want. <laughs> We're expanding <laughs> wider. From yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I, I do believe, unfortunately, some of the young people that we work with, due to the nature of their backgrounds or just because of the postcode they live in, they don't get as many opportunities or experiences as young people in other areas of the city. Uh, and then 
and that, that's not a new thing. I appreciate that. But I do feel that's where we as a charity, it's up to us to step in. Yeah. Right, right? What is a barrier stopping from that young person being able to achieve that? Right. We're smashing that. We're getting rid of that barrier because that doesn't need to be there. It shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. Every kid should be motivated, inspired, you know, aspiration levels raised due to the people that work with, the people that are around and have these opportunities put in front of them. that They can choose whether they want to do that or not, not just be told, no, you can't. Yeah, uh, that that that's that would be my my big magic wand. I think that's great, and I think <laughs> yeah, and I think this is what these in, these chats are about. Really, it's about saying you know it, there's not one path for everybody, and everybody has a different path, and um, and that's a common theme that's come through of the chats that I've had with others is that you know that if you you you, you do need to work hard, nothing will come easy, and that that's the way it should be. You should you should yeah. you know you should strive to do your best, whatever that may be, whatever you decide to be, whether you want to be. A bin man or whether you want to be a gardener or whether you want to be a doctor or whether you want to be a football coach it doesn't matter no. but but actually but try your best and and you know and there are people out there that can help you particularly during this time and um yeah and I think it's a really important message to get across and and, and like you say people aren't in jobs for life anymore so no. it's about developing skills and moving skills around to get yeah. to a point where you're you find something you're really passionate about and, and be willing to change direction at a very short notice. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm going yeah. to be doing this. That's me. I'm all set. I'm nearly there. And suddenly this opportunity comes out of nowhere. And you look and go, oh, that's Ooh, really good. Oh, yeah. I'll go and do that. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, the eyes get wider. Your spark happens. Like, oh, no, 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 no. Hang on. I'm going that way. Yeah. And I think it's very important that organizations are flexible enough to embrace that as well. Because sometimes when you see, you hear about an employability program or something like that, it's very, you'll be here, then you'll be there, then you'll be there. But that's the, again, that's the organization telling the young kids, <laughs> you know, you'll be here, there, and there, and then you'll get there. But sometimes half of one of the kids suddenly wants to go, oh, no, hang on, that, that way, that way, please. You go, oh, well, I can't change it because, you know, and that's where you, it's got to be some flexibility young people nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things change very, very quickly. And this last year has really proved that. Yeah, um, and, and I think the flexibility, sorry, that's my dogs in the background, but this flexibility, um, I think helps adults as well. I don't think it's just for young people. I think we can learn from young people and we can learn that actually you don't need to be set in one thing and the adaptability and the, um, I guess the enthusiasm to take on change is something that we can learn as older people, you know? Yeah. And I, so I think, it, I think it works both ways, doesn't it? We can learn from them, they can learn from us. And I don't know, because I've, I've worked with young people for a long time and, and you, do, you do learn from them. You know, there's a sense, and it's it that sometimes they're genius and they don't even know they're genius. As we agreed at the start, we're both still very young. Yeah. So, yeah. Only 21. Still, exactly. And we think we know. We don't. <laughs> you know, I can assure you, we do not. So it's very important that because we think it's right, it doesn't mean that's right for the young right. person. And they have to be considered and listened to. And, you know, and that's how you shape your programming. And let's see, you get asked for, oh, what's your three year, five year, seven year strategy? So, I don't know. Well, why don't you know? Because the young people don't know. They haven't told me yet. I'll tell you what we're going to be doing this year and how we're shaping it off their feedback. And we'll build on that and that and that. And that's how we'll have produce a long term plan. Uh, but it's been more effective than planning forward. I would say we, we're always fighting fire. That's the term we use in the office quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, that's, that, that, that's, that's not just for last minute funding applications, as we discussed as well, um, but it's because a group of young people have said, well, actually, we think we think street sport should be doing this or we, we'd like to be doing this at street sport i've heard about this what's that about you know that's how we kind of change quickly and we we'll provide every week's different and variety is definitely the spice of life uh, and that's what keeps us all going because it does make a difference if you're listening to kids reacting to what they want the rewards out of that will come it's only a matter of time as long as you keep believing the young people and listening to them the rewards of them moving into what they consider a positive destination not what i consider a positive destination but what they do that is where the spark comes both for us and the young people. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I just think we need to be much more, like you said, much more flexible, much more yeah. responsive. And again, back to the funding, which I don't want to go into, but they want a strategy and you're like, well, you can't develop a strategy mm-hmm. because you don't know your next cohort of kids. So Correct. you may plan something like you said, and, and that, and it works well for that group of kids at that time, but then yeah. your next group, group bunch of kids, it may not work at all. And you may absolutely. think that's not going to work. And you know, even the people that you, you, you kind of, uh, you think, well, that person will work well with those kids, but actually that person will work well better with those kids. And that kind of idea of flexibility is, is not reflected in the, in the way that things are funded and governed. And I think that's a shame because it should be kid-led. It should be young person-led. Yeah. And, and this last year will really show that because the way we worked 
previously before the coronavirus you know yet later you had a cohort you had a group of kids that want to do it one way we have a whole different due to what's happened this last year it's totally different now and we have to be more innovative and so do young people they have to be you know they have to want mm-hmm. something you know I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer of don't sit back nothing falls in your lap you know very you, you have to actually stick your head out and say this is where I want to be or try and be or what I want to try and achieve it's got to be that come from the young person they have to have the spark I can't we can't create a spark in their mind. It's got to come from themselves. Um, so I, I firmly encourage and, and trust every young person to, you know, spend five, 10 minutes and just think, right, if I'm not going to get help by, I'm not going to say the government or anything like that, but to get out of this situation, it's going to be on me. It's going to be my shoulders. How am I going to do it? And yeah. so, you know, find avenues, find ways, speak to the people at school, speak to other charities. You know, if you, if you come to street sports, speak to staff, coaches, say, speak to staff. Answers are there. In, you know help is there and support is there but it's up to you to go right now's the time i want to do this so that's i think that's great and would that be the advice that you would give young people because that was going to be my final question is yeah, it no, you know 100%. yeah 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 the coronavirus whilst we're hearing about vaccines coming in and the light at the end of the tunnel there's still a long way that tunnel is a very very long tunnel it's a long way to go yet um the school year will go very very fast you know there's some key moments in the school life as well like you say going into first year you know, and then being virtual or, you know, your last couple of years of school or exams and there's so much uncertainty and I'm not sure that information is, I don't know how much information is being fed down to the actual young people themselves, but feedback to us from them is not much or they're not really hearing it the way they like to. So they're unsure, there's a lot of uncertainties. Uh, and that could be, yeah, will I go to college? Will I go to uni? Will I find work? I'm leaving school, I don't, I don't know. So it's worth, you know, go out there, put your best foot forward, you know, have a think about where do you want to be? What do you want to do? And let's look at ways we can help you get there. Yeah, and I think the final message should be, like you said, I think for the sports analogy is that, you know, no great sports person gets there without maybe not succeeding the first time. So yeah. it is about, even if things don't work, it's about going back, it's about retrying. And um, just because something doesn't work doesn't mean it's a failure, it just didn't work. And that's yeah. that, that, that will happen throughout your life. Like the mindfulness stuff that we've been working with kids in is that take a breath, take a moment, because that you've got this moment and this moment will, will then cease and you'll be on to another moment. And that's the moment that you need to think, right, what I'm going to do, what can yeah, I do? Like absolutely. you said, what's in my control? What can, who can I access? Let me look online at the charities that work with young people. Let's see if I can like, you know, cause I, like you, I, I'm quite happy to talk to young people. You're happy to talk to young people. And it may not be about the things that we do, no, but it's, but it's sometimes it's, it's sometimes it's just about saying it's okay. You know, I can, I can chat to you anyway. You know, I can yep. sit down and have a conversation. No, I, I believe every child should have a good adult in their life. Uh, and that's someone who you can literally open up about anything. anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me be, too. A, be a career orientated or just a bit of support to go through life, you know. I mean, you, you mentioned sport. And <laughs> sport but I always I quite like the quote, um, you miss all the, if you don't take the shot, you don't score. Simple as that. You know, <laughs> been, you you know, can, yeah, I've got one, Simi, you've got to be in it to win it. So you've got to give oh, it a go. You've got to oh, give I, it a go. I'll come back it- with another one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael Jordan missed 80, 80% of the shots he ever took. Yeah. That's Michael Jordan, the greatest basketballer of all time. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we, that's the thing. It's people think that that life, I think even as a young person, you think it's got to be perfect, but there is no sense of perfection. Like I'm doing this recording. I've got dogs barking in the background. Nothing is perfect. And that's okay. Because what we're doing here is trying to chat to young people about what they can do when they, when they, when they progress through their, their school life and into their adult life. That's the important message. And it's not perfect, but what it is, is that you've got, which is lovely and it's brilliant speaking to you is that there is a bunch of people in Aberdeen that will help young people because yeah. a, it's our passion it's our job for sure but actually it's kind of what we're almost obsessed with <laughs> because because without being obsessed with it we wouldn't be able to do it no that is, yeah, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by a team of very like-minded people who believe in young people and want to make a positive difference for them but yeah, every young person has a road to follow but every single road is windy it's rocky there's rivers to jump over and swim through it's not plain sailing, but you've got to keep pushing forward. Yeah. On on that really positive note, I want to thank you so much for your time today. It's been an absolute delight. Oh. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll get to see each other soon. I keep on saying this, um, but yeah, um, anything I can help with, let me know. But thank you so much for your time today, Mark. Yeah, no, no, it was all. Thank you very much. <laughs>